Boom, ladies and gentlemen, it is official. We are this year gonna do the first executive protection symposium, right? So many of you know that I've been doing the protector symposium for quite a few years. And uh, it's been awesome, man. Like we've been able to really change people's lives. Um, but this year we're gonna aim at something a little bit different. I've been wanting to do this forever. And I'm gonna use the skills I learned from the first event to do this. This is gonna be an event aimed at executive protection professionals. This is gonna be an event aimed at agents and management level, team leaders, and folks that are building their careers. I wanted to create an event that had extreme value to us. You know what I mean? So like we go, we're out in the industry, um, we go to events and why do we go to these events? Because of networking, right? What if I could create an event that supercharged the networking impact on your, on your career and those relationships? This event, the EP Symposium, is designed to do that. I will get you in front of hiring managers. You will be able to get your professional photo taken on site. You will have a number of experiences with those same hiring managers that will help you be identified to be hired. There's gonna be multiple sub networking events in the, inside this event. You're gonna have the opportunity to train if you want to and get certifications that you maybe didn't have enough time to get during the year. Uh, plus up on some medical certs, take a pistol course, you know, take a number of different courses that we can knock out in the course of a day and just plus up your training jacket. So you walk away with definite validated, like value to take out of the industry to make you even more hireable and let these training directors see you, right? Um, have industry conversations that are led by the crowd. So you're not just sitting there watching PowerPoint presentations the whole time and wondering if you're getting value. This event is carefully crafted to get value to the agent on the ground and team leaders so that we can find each other, find each other, get work and have the most valuable careers of our lives in the protection industry. There's never been anything like this. We're gonna focus on hard skills and soft skills. And if you really want to, you'll also get a chance to compete in the protector games and find out where you stack up in the industry. But that's not for everyone. You don't have to participate in it. But I can't wait to bring you the EP Symposium coming to you this year. Hit the links below, sign up, early bird prices, all the madness. We're just warming up, we're just getting started. This is gonna be amazing. God bless, Semper Fi, more to come. Boom, what's up you guys? So for this episode, we're gonna do something a little bit different. I wanna go back and take a look at some of the episodes that we've had uh, with the SMEs uh, for the EP Expo event coming up. Uh, these guys have been like serious contributors to the industry but also do the podcast over the years. So this episode is a mix of different moments I've had with these guys on the podcast. I've worked with many of these guys and, and I wanna bring these back up because there's just some awesome moments in here. So sit back and, and relax, enjoy, listen to some of the amazing speakers. And I hope that it inspires you to come and join us for the EP Expo uh, that's coming up August 20. 4th and 25th and if you're watching this after the EP Expo uh, go to executiveprotectionlifestyle.com uh, because you never know there's, there's probably another one coming up and uh, tickets are probably for sale so I look forward to you guys and also don't forget you can get the digital replay of the Expo if you're outside of the US and you still want to see the event God bless Semper Fi enjoy the episode Charles is going to be one of our speakers, one of our presenters, one of our elite instructors at the EPX event, the EP Expo. I'm super stoked about that. Maybe give him a little, a little bit of a preview, man. What do you, what, what are you excited about uh, with regards to this event? And then we'll get into more of the business of executive protection conversation. I got a little itinerary with some questions. I think I got some good ones coming. But for the um, event, what are you excited about, bro? I, I'm, I'm excited about the whole. Thing. So, so for me, the the top of my list is is the networking. Now, that's networking at every level, right? Uh, so you and I, you know, we're, we're we'll we'll go shoot together, we train together, you know, we'll we'll, uh, we'll go do these types of things, we'll work together, we do all that yeah. stuff. So that's always an honor and a pleasure. And thank you for asking me for this because that's that's a good uh, head nod that you gave me. So I appreciate hey, it. One hundred percent. But I, I really love the mentorship aspect. So I think I probably said this on a few other podcasts. I've had some phenomenal mentors. Um, I've also had horrible bosses and I learned from everybody. Um, 
But if there's, you know, being 20 years doing this thing, if there's anything that I can impart to a new guy trying to come up in the game and make a name for himself and make a living and take care of his family, take care of his team, take care of his company, and just help impart that right mindset, yeah. I'm more than happy to do that. You know, at some point, we're going to retire out of this thing and someone yeah. else has got to grab the torch and, and carry that. So anything I can do to help direct that, even guys who've been in the game for a while, um, we all get things from each other. You know, yeah. someone else has been in the game for 20 years and they'll say something to me and I think I know stuff. And I'm like, man, I, that's the first time I heard that. I'm going to hit that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. So new guys, guys that have been in it for a while, vets, you know, uh, guys coming from all backgrounds, military, law enforcement, or both, or just coming up in the private sector, you know, what does it mean to work in the private sector? What are its challenges? What, what are the positives, the negatives, the whole thing? What are the pitfalls you got to watch out for? I just love chopping it up with people because, um, you know, it's like martial arts. You roll with a dude and you get hammered for five minutes straight, submitted three, four times, and you go, know each other. that sucked, but I learned a bit, you know what I mean? <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> so chopping it up back and forth, uh, uh, building the network, uh, meeting new people. You know, we also meet a lot of uh, we make relationships in other areas, which yes. I, I like. You know, we just recently needed people in New York and we had to go through a couple subs. We needed people in Miami. We had to go through a couple. You gave me a couple uh, uh, guys in those places um, uh, overseas. We had a couple things. So how do we find those guys, build that relationship? Because, you know, you can't just meet somebody and put them on it on your detail. That's playing with fire. You got to know them. You got to know the background. You got to have the right references. Uh, they got to pass the sniff test. They got to be vetted. Uh, yeah. So being able to do that stuff, um, I'm looking forward to it, man. Anyway, Thank long winded answer, but that's one. No, no, it's good stuff, bro. You're going to compete in the protector games. I may. I may. He's going to be may. around you're, day you're, one. You're calling me out. And now you put it on the podcast. So, so <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm going to have to get out there. I'm an old guy, but I'm going to have to knock some dust off. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm an office guy at this point. I yeah, did once in a while, but uh, but um, yeah, yeah. I got. Some, I still got it. You still got it. He'd be on the mats, man. You guys, you guys follow him, man. It's good stuff. You know, he'd be out there wilding out. He'd be out there getting it in. You know, training. I'm trying to stay young, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. You the, there's there's a shelf life, and if you can't perform, you know, you got to hang it up. So I'm, I'm just steadily making sure I can perform. No, hundred percent. Let's talk a little bit about because this impacts all of us. A little bit about uh, health and fitness, bro. Because you look like you cleaned your game up, bro. Up, you know, like you were always fit and athletic. You always had a, a build where it's like, okay, this dude's a strong dude. But like, um, you look healthier, and you know, a lot of guys out there are struggling with that. So, any tips, anything you're doing that you want to pass on? Yeah, absolutely. Let me let me preface it with this: is you represent your own brand, you represent your client's brand, your team's brand, right? So if you're looking sloppy, it's it's it will hurt you. Okay, it will so hurt I'll, you. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll speak for myself. Yep. Okay, I played ball all through school, you know, college, what have you. Had opportunities at arena ball, but kept getting hurt. So I was pretty athletic all all through school. That's the the point of that comment. Um, having that, I was always in pretty good shape. There was a time where I was working quite a bit and wasn't getting my gym time in. I wasn't getting it in like I should. Put on a few pounds, got caught in uh, pictures that hit the wire. I wasn't way overweight or anything like that, but for my standard, I saw it and it shook me. I was like, "That is not uh, freaking <laughs> acceptable." Yeah, and and I don't know at all, but I think it may have hurt me a little bit with the client I was with with at the time. So I had to rectify that immediately. I never got told anything. Nobody ever says straighten it up or anything like that. I was just like, man, I'm feeling like the shifts are not as coming <laughs> as free. <laughs> am I the fat kid of the detail? Like, am I the plus yeah. size model today? You know? <laughs> yeah, and I wasn't even really a fat kid, but I wasn't at the standard that yeah. that client would have wanted. So we'll just mm -hmm. put it like that. So that is key because you represent, right? Do you look the part? Yep. Uh, are you a visual deterrent enough? If someone knows, you know, sometimes we're high vis, low vis, whatever. Well, uh, yeah. Sometimes we're a visual deterrent, but you know, mm -hmm. we won't be seen until it's time to be seen. But when it's time to be seen, are you a hard target? Is one hundred percent. Yeah. So I, I, uh, I actually switched my game up to answer that part of the question. I Here, real quick. We won't be seen until it's time to be seen. But when we are seen. Are you a hard target? Message, take that one. Like, I mean, those sound effects I've been seeing on, anyways. On the other uh, uh, yeah, know, man, but, it, but but it's true, right? Uh, 100%. Uh, so so that's a consideration for 
company owners, points to contact, the clients themselves, uh, maybe your stature's not, you know, maybe you're not hitting quite six feet. You know right. what I mean? Maybe you're not 200 pounds. You know what I mean? Maybe you're a smaller guy. Uh, what are you bringing to the table? Yep. Right. You have a martial arts background. Like, can, do you have these hard skills that, that are, that are going to solve problems? How do you carry yourself? What's your demeanor? Uh, uh, can you communicate uh, de-escalation? All these things, like all these things matter, right? Are you a big guy? Great. Are you fat or are you just big boned? You know what I mean? <laughs> are you, are you hitting the gym? That type of thing. So I was, uh, I was hitting the gym and, and that, uh, just from playing sports through school and whatnot, that was a heavy part of the regimen. And I'm not saying don't do that, but I pivoted from there and started going heavy in the martial arts with the Muay Thai and the BJJ. Ooh. For me, it's more of a translatable skill to what I may need if I ever do need that skill set. Uh, yep. It also keeps it sharp because I can't have done it. I couldn't have been awesome 10 years ago. You know what I mean? That It's a perishable skill just like everything else. Yep. So I stay on that. Keeps me in shape. Cardio's right. There's no fight like uh, fight. There's no shape like fight shape. Yep. Um, so it, it keeps that together. Also, I've been injured much less. So mm -hmm. part about how I, I, I train martial arts and that kind of thing, but I'm injured less because it is functional fitness as opposed to, you know, let's just push the weights and work the beach muscles or, or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so it's actually helped quite a bit. Less injuries, less soreness, that kind of thing, and uh, and much better cardio. So thank you. I, I push it up to that. It helps quite a bit. You know, 2020, uh, you know, we've always grown every year, maybe 10%, 15% modest growth from 2005. Mm -hmm. Some years were higher, some years were lower. 2020, we got kicked in the teeth. We were down 63% that year. Never oh. down here. Yeah, yeah. Lost a lot of guys, you know, to different man, places. Painful, man. So painful to see. And back then, there was no vaccine. There was no sign of anything opening up again. Like everything, there was blood in the streets. And we were, it was very hard for me uh, as the owner, the guy that's responsible for pro providing opportunities. Yeah. We, put, we protect people in places. There's no people going any places. Who are we going to make? How are we going to make a living? So anyways, what it did was it put our, it put our backs against the wall and it was either come out of here like a Phoenix or, 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 or say, woe is me, woe is me and, and give up everything that I've built for the last 18 years. Right. So, of course we came out like a Phoenix. We hit guns blazing. Uh, everything opened back up. Music tours started touring again. Sporting events started happening again. Executives started going to meetings again. Uh, family started going on vacations again. So we were able to drink out of that fire hose and yeah. absorb it because we have roots in the ground for all these years. And nice. what, that be, what that happened for us, we got awarded South Florida Business Journal. There's a business journal down here. And they awarded us uh, one of the fastest 50 growing companies in South Florida. There's 1.8 million companies in Florida. We were, the, we were the 12th fastest growing. So the reason why is, like I said, because we went from a negative 63 to a positive 228% growth because wow. of that, because everything opened at once. So, so that's been awesome. Uh, I, I'm off the road now. I don't tour anymore. I decided to do that in December of 2019. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody made it out. There's another big artist there that wants more money. That, that pays it. Yeah. Not enough. So it can be done, guys. It can be done. Yeah, after 20 something years, it's done. And I just left the biggest world tour for music uh, musicians that uh, music tour that year. And I put a cap on it. I said, I started started on the top. I'm going to end my career on top. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be behind the desk. And that's where I'm at now. So between the pandemic open back, opening things back up, uh, the, the plague, uh, you know, opening things back up, yeah. and being on the ground, uh, good additions to my company that have been with me a long time, also coming here and being behind the desk. Which is helping me, like my new, I, my my chief of operations guy has been with me 18 years. He's absolutely killing the event division. I think you can see this here. We got awarded uh, Security Club of the Year by Major League Soccer, and that's a testament to him. Our human resource growth came on full time instead of remotely. That's been killing it. So you know, I can go on and on. So we've got a big office now here, and uh, you know, while the, while the astronauts operate in outer space, we're all here at command center making sure it happens, and and that's why we've been able to enjoy this success. But but look, man, it's, it's been a long, I've never, we've never been in this stride. I don't want people thinking like, oh man, Guardian is doing great. It must have always been that way. Yeah. I wanted to quit a million times. And and I, I I compare it to like a football. Anybody that watches football, it's like when that running back is behind the line trying to get to that corner, it's a miserable time. Everybody's twice as big as you. They're coming at you hundred miles an hour. until he turns that corner and he starts running, running upfield. That's where we're finally at. We just turned the corner and we're running upfield and 
there's nothing in front of us except for that touchdown, that end zone. So we're going to keep going. <laughs> That's awesome. And it took what you said, you've been at this craft for 18 years? Yeah, well, I started in security in general in 1996. But but I started at this level in 2002, 2003. Uh, so that's when I started the world touring, the international. So, yeah, so, it's, so that's 20 years of touring, you know, mm. and this is our 19th year of owning Guardian, 20 something years of touring. And wow. The 19th year of owning Guardian, yeah. So that's, I'm just clocking in, you know what I'm saying? I just clock it in. Bravo started in 2017. So, oh. got a lot to learn. I'm trying to, I'm trying to curve the edge. But listen, man, you're doing that, great where you're at. You're doing you great. Know? Where you're at. Yeah. Oh, thank you, man. That's so cool. Uh, a very inspirational story, man. Good to see people in our industry killing it. It's one of the reasons that I, I, you know, when we do our little things, I love just talking with you because I get, I always get little, I get wisdom and stuff. And it's one of the things that I, I really, you know, valued about you that, that caused me to want to bring you in for the EPX event was like, man, let's talk to somebody who's been in this game, who's done business, who's actually turned that corner and can see that end zone, man. And I'm super stoked for this upcoming EP Expo, man. What would you say? And that's why, and that, you know, that's why I picked you. Cause I remember being like, there's a lot of agent information out there. Um, but I, I think there should be a lot more business information out there as well. You also bring, you know, you know, all the agent information as well to this game, but like, man, you know, I see a lot of guys just jump in, you know, I see a lot of guys just like, well, I've been doing EP for a while. I'm going to start a business. And I'm like, that's a different skill set, homie. Yeah, <laughs> you're, you're a grappler and you're about to go stand up with some Muay Thai guys. Like, yeah, it's man. just, you, I mean, you can fight, but like, you know what I mean? I don't think, I, I think that people get so, I, these days, like I mentioned, people are about their brand and I want to be the CEO. Those are just letters, man. You know, like, like who right. gives a shit? Like, okay, I'm the boss. I like the word boss. I like when people call. I don't, I don't care about it. Like, it, to, when people get so uh, caught up in that, and I'm I'm an entrepreneur, and I like to, bro, it, it it is such a tremendous workload. Yeah, I would. I, I didn't choose to start Guardian. I I, and that's another thing I'm going to talk about at your expo. Let's my go. Guys, my guys told me to start it up. We were, we were catching bullets for pennies, and yeah. my guy was like, "Yo, Ant, we follow you. This guy is not doing the right thing by us. We need a quarterback. We need you to lead us. Can you can you start something?" And that's when I wow. did it. I had it my way. Listen, I would have I would have been a worker bee, clock in, clock out. I'd probably be married by now with kids. I probably have grandkids by now. I probably have a better life. I, I wouldn't fluctuate in weight 100 pounds every year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't have all the stress though. It's like I never choose that chose this. It chose me. So yeah. I, I think my message that I'm gonna that I want to bring a pro not only in this podcast but at the expo is I want these guys to really get a good understanding of what to expect. And you know me, man. I'm not gonna. There's no, the gloves are off. I'm always going to keep it very straight open. Yeah. Whether people hate me or they love me, they're going to always get the real, give these guys a real, what they can expect, the good, the bad, and the ugly. But I'm going to focus on the bad and the ugly because I think too many people are already looking at the good. You got to pay attention to the bad. And trust me, there's plenty of it. On this yeah, program. man. Yeah. And it's shape shifted already, man. Like it's just yeah. like whack a ball sometimes, man. <laughs> you know, but anyways, nah, man. So EP Expo, August 24th, 25th. Yes. You guys, we're going to go live. It's I made it quick, down, dirty. It's a Saturday, Sunday, get in, get out. Day one is going to be hard skills. It's going to be come do the protector games where some of us will compete. Uh, those of us who have the balls to compete will compete. But it's just like for fun, man. Like, let's get in there. Let's mess around. You do it, yeah, you do it out there. You challenge them a little bit. Who's <laughs> yeah, a little jab. Back up a little jab. <laughs> you know? Um, but, you know, but look, I've done it. I did a, another competition thing, bro. Like, no one showed up. They're all just like, everybody's so cool all the time. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You know? So I'm, I'm like, I want to mess with them a little bit. So you can come out, compete, get your bragging rights. Um, and just have fun with the boys at the protector games, you know, but there's going to be like a little, a little pool of guys at the top, taking it super serious, fighting each other for that gold, you know? And then the other thing is we're going to have courses there. So you can come, you can get your NAEMT, uh, you can come and get your TECC cert that day. And I'm going to have a few other like eight hour hard skill centric courses you can take day one. You know, the EP Expo is not a, a, a conference, okay? This is a hands-on, interactive, relationship-centric game, right? So after day one, you compete uh, or you take a course, 
and it's all going to be included in the ticket price. Then we go and we have a mixer. We have an evening together. We have a few drinks. The cigar guys smoke cigars, but we we build relationships, right? My goal is for everyone at the end of this event to be like one big family. And I've been doing events now for half a decade, so I know how to do this. When we get done, we're going to be like, man, like you're going to know each other. You're not just going to have the freaking stack of cards that you walk away with where you don't even know who these guys are. You got, yeah, yeah. You just sit there and I'm like, who, yeah, who is this guy? You know, where you're like, how do I monetize? How do I get these relationships to make, you know, do some career success with? No, nah, it's going to be like, no, I remember that guy. He was solid. I want to work with that guy. Right. So, so evening, every evening is fellowship. And then we go into day two. That's going to be our soft skills day. That's when we're going to have our speakers. We got Anton Collision here. Uh, we got Elliot Lowenstein. We got uh, Will Geddes. We got Elijah Shaw. Uh, Rick Sweeney's up in the house, Charles Law and possibly Todd Fox. We got a few things going on. We may, we're working on some things with his schedule. But the point is, man, you're getting seven awesome folks up there and it's not going to be talking at you. Yes, there'll be some presentation value and information they want to get to you, but it's going to be conversational. You're going to be able to take the mic. You're going to be able to present a question. We'll be up there. It's going to be a lot like a live in person, almost like a live podcast where you're involved and you guys are answering the questions, asking questions, because we want to serve you guys with that time. So after that, then we go to, oh, actually, I should say this too. So while you're in that room, that big room, you're going to have resume row. Make sure you bring your resume, right? If you're part of the league, I'm going to coach you on it. Make sure you are able to hand that thing out. Make sure you have a digital version of it. You know, you walk up to the table, you see, you'll see Guardian's table. You'll be able to send them your, your resume. There'll be people there from many different companies in our industry that are, you're going to have an opportunity to contact, shake hands with, maybe do a quick interview. Uh, we're going to also have professional photos there. We're going to have a professional photo booth. You're going to be dressed sharp. It's the soft skills day. Get a new pro photo. Your pro photo has a lot to say about who calls you and who don't call you. I'm just, I hate to say it, but it does, right? So get a good pro photo, man. There's money in that. And then that night, I'm just going to throw the biggest mansion party I can for everybody based on how many tickets we sell. <laughs> you know, this is a zero. We're not making money, bro. We're having an experience on this one. So um, that's the EP Expo, uh, August 24th, 25th. I can't wait for you guys to come, man. It's going to be amazing. I think it's going to be awesome, guys. And, and like I said, it, or, or just the real life story here, like if I wish I had something like this when yeah. I was younger, I, I mean, the diets that you put together, everybody's very well respected. I've known a lot of these guys' names. I've been in the industry a very long time. And what's unique about this is everybody's got a very unique background or the yeah. different different route they took in protection, whether it was celebrity right. or executive or, or what have you, sporting, right. et cetera. Yeah. So for, I think that it's time to invest in your life, man, invest in your future, you know, this is an opportunity for you to hear the real stories from real guys from all, all sorts of all shapes, sizes and colors. And, and it's two days and, and it, you know, it, it's going it, to it's a blessing to be a part of this. And I'm just happy that something like this is out there. It's yeah. new, it's fresh. And like I said, it's so diverse. I, I'm, I'm really excited to be a part of it. I encourage I encourage anybody out there to, to head over the, for those two days and get as much as you can out of it. Because like I yeah. said, no one taught me to have this here for you guys. I would I would jump on. It's a great opportunity. Elijah is going to be one of our elite instructors for the EP Expo that's coming up here, um, coming up really fast. Uh, yeah, thank you for the invite. I appreciate it. Oh, you got to be, you got to be kidding me. Well, you know, I was like, I was like, yo, I hope, I hope Elijah can come out because you're usually so busy. You know, we be, it's like refueling in midair trying to get these things to work sure. out. Um, but, but with that said though, bro, you know, anytime I can support your endeavors, I try to one, because they're fresh, thank you, you know, and <clears throat> the the people that come to it, you know, traditionally come to it with an open mind. They're there to learn. They have various degrees of expertise, but, um, <clears throat> you know, they're not jaded or approach a thing as if they're just checking boxes. And I, I think that's great. So, you know, when I go to your events and we get a chance to talk and, and usually the formats have been non-traditional and <clears throat> maybe we'll get into that a little bit later. You know your boy, but, man. You know your boy. But what it allows us to do is is to be able to engage in conversations with people that, you know, I might not have a time to be able to talk to when I'm operational. I'm on the field and I'm moving, you know, and that happens sometimes. I'll see somebody at an event or I'll be in a restaurant with the P and, and they'll, they'll recognize me. And, you know, I, I can't be as uh, warm or inviting and, you know, or, or so yeah, we can't engage really. You know? Exactly. Cause, cause, we're, cause we're working, you know, and right. I call it the gift and the curse, you know, Hey, I wrote a book. That's great. I want people to buy the book, but yeah. when I'm out in the field, 
you know, it's, it's, it's the way I, I, I was able to write the book because I'm actually doing the work. So, yep. so I say all to say is that going to an event like yours, I like it because I can meet these people that I only know virtually on the socials or something or, or see in passing and be able to kind of engage in dialogue. Mm-hmm. No, I, I, and I love that. And that's literally one of my favorite parts about having these in-person events, man, because you can finally shake hands with people, see them face to face. And the things that I hear are such a blessing. And I'm I'm saying this for you guys that have said things to me in the past. And I know Eliza's the same way. It's such a blessing when somebody comes up and is like, yo, you know, like I just had a conversation yesterday. Hey, you inspired me to get into this industry. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm now able to provide for my family, blah, 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 blah. Um, mm-hmm. I, I didn't know I could do this. I didn't know I would even, you know, I have a civilian background. I didn't know I would even be able to do this, but then your content, that episode with Elijah, you know, uh, inspired me. Now I have a whole new, new life and da, da, da. So like being able to come and meet and hang out and spend time with people is extremely valuable. You said something else that was powerful too, real quick, just jump, jump real quick into the next topic, uh, sure. not this topic, but a caveat was, you're out there doing the work, you know, and that was one of my, we have, uh, I want to say seven instructors, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven instructors for this uh, event. And that was one of the main things I really wanted to do is I wanted to bring something fresh to the industry. I wanted people to get a look at other folks that are out there doing it in different quadrants, in different client demographics, aspect of the game, you know, and, and that are really out there doing it right now that aren't retired. Um, they got, have a pulse on what the game is like right now and like could literally physically protect you. See, that was one of yeah. my, like, I look, I love looking at my lineup and I'm like, every dude on here is a juggernaut. <laughs> I was saying, like a real life one. Yeah. <laughs> right now. But, but, but let me, let me say that the, the reason why I know that works is because when I saw the lineup and again, I'm excluding myself from that category, I was like, oh shit, these are people that I don't want to hear from. You yeah. know, these are people I'm interested in. And so I think you know, being able to, for me to feel like that, others will feel like that as well. And, um, and I want to just take it back for a second here, which is you've been able to put something together and create something great. And it benefits certain demographics, people that are new, people that are interested in getting into the industry, people that have an open mind and, but you have a, a wide reach. So you're going to have detractors. You're going to have some people who are going to go, oh, that's a waste of money, or why am I spending time, or, or who, you know, who are these people to teach me? That's fine. That's not your audience. Right. Your audience is that one person that you reference that said, hey, listening to you or the interactions I made helped me develop a career or go in the right direction. And that's the person. That's the thing that makes it, it, it worthwhile. And so the people who don't get it, that means it's just not for you, which is great. When you go in a supermarket, there's tons of different jellies. There's tons <laughs> right? of, you know what I mean? Like Find your so, jelly. Yeah, get, right. Get the peanut butter that you like, bro. You know right, what I mean? Right. So that's fine. It doesn't mean all the other peanut butter, you got to throw it away. Yeah. It just means you just keep walking down the aisle. And so so I, I salute you for that, bro. And um, I, I want you to keep doing the things that you're doing and refine them make them better. You know what I mean? And oh, yeah. we talk offline a lot. So we yeah. have those conversations about how to get better. The yeah. conversations aren't like, you know, how to make more money and such and such. And such. <laughs> the conversations are like how to be better service orientated. Your topic, celebrity uh, protection, of course. Maybe. Only because, you know, I like to talk about things that I know <laughs> extremely yeah, well. Um, yeah. And that's the sector there. That's the sector that I spend the majority of my time in. It's not the only thing I do by far. But that's the thing I'm best known for. <clears throat> but it's also the thing that I think people get wrong, you know, quite a bit in our profession. So mm. there's um, misinformation that's out there. There's mm. bad actors that are out there. Mm. But there are people that are doing it well, and those things aren't highlighted. Mm. And the last part of it is there's people who are in that space or want to get in that space, and you just don't know what you don't know. And it's the nuances of a thing. I would say you know, with protection work, it all has the same basic foundation, right? You mm-hmm. know, so whether that's protection of the clergy, uh, whether that's corporate protection, uh, working with celebrities, working with dignitaries, the foundational elements are the same. Those are great. You need to know those. But then as you start getting to these specialized fields, these, these niche areas, right, you have to be able to understand the nuances that work in that space in order to succeed. Mm-hmm. Anybody can get in. Anybody can do it. It's whether you have any longevity, you know, it's whether you're able to operate in that space 
um, Move for a year. Space. Operating in that space for five yeah. years. Operating in that space for a decade. Because I think overall, that's our goals, right? It's to, to do things that we like to do yeah. for a long amount of time yeah. up until the point where we choose not to do them anymore. And and I think you can fall in love and be in love in this industry. You can do what you like. I love what I do, bro. Yeah. And I can tell you love what you do because we have yeah. conversations offline. But I love what I do because I've figured out the way to make it work for me. Mm-hmm. And I've also learned how to say no. Mm-hmm. But if if you don't understand the parameters, if you don't understand, you know, where your value is, if you don't understand how to show the client the, the value that you provide, right? You don't put yourself in a position to say no because you need that check. Right. You know what I mean? Or you're worried about that job. You're worried about that callback. Mm-hmm. But the the tools, and that's from me, from Anton, the other presenters that are here. The, the tools that you get, you're able to take those because they come from experiences. Right. And I got this little tagline. I say real world versus textbook. Let's it's go. because it's because I understand what the book says. Right. Yeah. I understand how you're supposed to do it, but then I make the adjustments, right, to make it practical for the field that we're in. And yeah. if you can do that, the clients notice that either overtly or innately. Mm-hmm. But that's the thing that keeps your phone ringing. I get guys on the firing line. I'm doing an end doc to get on a detail. We want to be as advertised. I got my military guy. I got my law enforcement guy. I got my civilian military guy. It's like, yeah, I just got back from Iraq. You know, this is going to be easy. <laughs> and then I got my law enforcement guys. Like, yeah, this is going to be easy. We shoot, you know, and I'm like, okay, cool. I mean, we're going to do basic quals. I'm not the no performance drills. Just you're going to carry a gun in service as a client, my company. I need to know that you're on or above law enforcement levels. I'm proficient. Yeah. Yeah. You're a prof- you're an actual professional, right? And then my civilian guy, you know, what's your background? Oh, you know, I'm just, you know, I, I train, I, I shoot some competitions, I go to some courses, but I'm ongoing training. We get out there, civilian guy's doing just fine. I'm not asking a lot, but he's doing just fine. My military law enforcement guys are struggling because I feel like the background becomes a stumbling block. At some point, I agree. I agree. You know, Byron, you've really, you're one of the few people who actually understands this. I get a lot of guys who message me regularly, you know, who are thinking of coming into the industry and they go, I'd really love to do what you do, but I'm a civilian. I can't get into it. So when I turn around and say, Well, hey, I'm a civilian, they go, Oh my God, okay, it's possible. It's doable. The thing I find with a lot of military guys, and, you know, I count countless guys as good friends who are from all different arms of uh, the you know the, the armed services and the military and guys from law enforcement they come with a preset approach which is their kind of stratagem this is how you deal with it this is how you operate and if they are split up and that was another thing i'm going to pick up on that you said which is so valuable that they can only do it that way they're too rigid in the way that they operate and you know that, you know, when guys come out, I always turn around to them. I say, we've got to provide platinum solutions on a tinfoil budget. So you're not going to get all the resources and the toys and you're going to get all the, the stuff that you want, you know. Platinum <laughs> solutions on a tinfoil budget. I mean, I, that might be the name of the it was so good. That's awesome. And, but, but you're right about if you put too many of the same ilk on a team, Ah, it can be a fucking disaster. I, I had that. I had I used to at one point use just special forces guys. I didn't mm-hmm. pick from parachute regiment or Royal Marines. Uh, and I just literally have it SF guys. And they were a fucking nightmare. They they literally were so cliquey. They would literally kind of glue together and then they became like unruly children. And I I mean, I remember sacking a, a bunch of five guys who were all ex, you know, literally just walked out of SAS. And I said, a lot of you are fucking useless. Off. (laughs) They they went. So (laughs) I learned from that time. (laughs) You've got, got, I mean, the point you made is so valuable. You've got to mix the team up. You've got to have different people from different backgrounds. And and the the, the one consistent between all of them is they've got to be good at the soft skills. The soft skills. Any any guy can come with the hard skills. Anybody can come with the hard skills. If they can't do the soft skills, they won't survive. They literally won't survive. And there's been so many guys that are good dudes. I would go to war shoulder to shoulder with them right now, but I've seen them get left on the runway because of soft mm. skills. And it, it's yeah, broken yeah. my heart. I'm just sitting there like, wow, this is happening, man. This this guy can keep you safer than me if mm. something happened right here, right now. But, yeah. you know, soft skills. Um, I, I had one of those guys in Iraq with me. He was an ex-SAS guy. He was only about three foot tall. I mean, a lot of SF guys over here. 
They're not. They're um, not six foot seven giants. They, they're all kind of sub six foot. Most of these guys, and they yeah. look like everything, and they look like everybody. They don't look like you know. You you look at them and go, you don't look special forces. You look you look as though you'd have a heart attack if you ran up those stairs. But I had this one guy, this tiny little fella, uh, yeah. vicious Mick, as we called him. And literally, we couldn't have him near the client. You know, we 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 said, "Look, here's a fifty cal. Kill anything that comes in this direction." He was brilliant. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> put him in front of the client. Forget it. Horrible. Well, he's he's one of those break glass during times of war. <laughs> yeah. Pull him out the package, put him out there, and he just does his thing. You know, and those yeah. guys are awesome, but you got to protect him on the detail. Um, yeah. You, so, so I wanted to I wanted to accentuate that for the civilians listening. If you put in the work and and also you, the less rigidity that you have actually in many cases makes it easier for you to connect with the client. You know, um, military law enforcement guys walk into some rooms and it's like, oh, the cops are here. Oh, there's military guys. There's certain demographics that actually appreciate yeah. having like, OK, the stress is low. I feel normal. I'm with someone who actually kind of doesn't have that stiffness sometimes. Yeah. So there's advantages to it, you know. Um Let's talk a little bit about this. This I'd also say I'd also say the most important person and thing in your life is this, because if I call you and you don't pick up, you miss the work. Yep, you're dead in the water. Yeah, let's go into some <laughs> advice for guys wanting to get into the industry. You know, what would you say right now for 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 guys that are wanting to get in and gals that are wanting to get into the game? Okay, um, more girls. We definitely more need more girls. Um, <laughs> You know, I, I've I've done EP details with female executives and principals, and we are restricted from what we can do. We, you know, even in these gender neutral times that we live in, you know, we can't go into the washroom with uh, a female principal, and the and the threat could be in the washroom. You know, if it's someone who's a celebrity, she comes out, she's fixing her hair or her makeup. And a couple of other girls come out the stalls and then go, we think you're shit, or we love you, or whatever. And what can we do? We're stuffed. Um, female principals, I, you know, I've met some badass women as well. I'd equally take into the fire with me, you know, who are just as good. And, and I'd love to encourage more women to do it, but you're, you're going to be treated the same as the guys that don't, don't think any special dispensation is going to be made for you. You're prepared to knuckle down. You're prepared to screw the nut. Very important. Number one, come in with humility. You know, it's like, if I go into someone else's dojo, I'll walk in with a white belt. I don't want anybody to know what my game is. I keep it in myself. Uh, yeah. If, you know, they'll, they'll find out or they won't, but that'll be my choice. Walking with humility, walking serious, but retain a sense of humor because yeah. you know what the hours are like, Byron. We can be stuck in a reception waiting for a principal for hours. We can be sat on the pan waiting for the jet to arrive. And you want to be around people that are actually going to be fun, people who are going to take the job seriously, can switch in a moment, Either to be serious the moment the principal steps off, the, you know, comes down the steps on the jet, uh, or comes out this of the, the lift important. into the reception. <laughs> like, is this guy going yeah. to work with? Is this girl or guy? You know what I mean? And being yeah. able to be efficient, but also grease it with a sense of humor and like, and that that emotional intelligence really matters when the client's yeah. like doing what the clients do and we're trying to keep up and they're like i want to go to that one place that i was at last thursday uh with the good burritos and you got to just like osmosis it in yeah and make yeah it yeah you, know? you want someone who can just flow you know those guys that get all emotional like but we have an event and we have a dinner it's like bro stop stop, stop. No, no 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 this is humility is key humility is key if you need to go and pick up the dog, the, the, the principal's dog shit because it's shat in the uh, reception area, you do it. You know, it's like if I walk into a hotel with a principal or I've, they're on the advance, uh, I will find the general manager. I'll find the head of security. The first thing I will say to them is, I am your guest, as is my principal. I appreciate that you are allowing your facility, your home to be open to us to visit. We will not impose. We will not cause disruption to your other guests. We will be really low key, really low profile. We're not here to create any problems. And if there are, as the TL, come and see me. Right. So many of them are, it's amazing, Byron. You probably get this as well. So many of these guys come around and say, oh my God, this, I'd, you, I'd never get this. I get these stupid BGs and these EPs walking in, pushing people out of the way, you. thinking they rule the fucking place. And you know what? You going in and saying, hey, if there's any problems, please come to me but I'm going to make sure my team is low profile and we don't disturb or, or cause any disruption to the operating of your, your, your lovely site. 
and right. and they love it because you're already setting the bar to saying you know we 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 we're, we're humble rather mm-hmm. than we're ruling the roost working solo managing client expectations i think the first thing that kicks that that, that i always um and also had to learn not to do with this is as private security professionals i think sometimes we think we need to be the guys that can say yes and the guys that can be like hey yeah i can do it no matter what 100% um it'll be secure dot 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 i think it's really really important for you to be able to let the principal client customer know you know these are kind of the parameters that i'm going to be working with i would be able to offer you a higher level of protection if i had an extra uh, uh, an extra guy industry standard you know would be two agents on this detail we can do it with one but here are the differences i think that's something that is a good place to start when you're uh talking to your principals and your clients because you want to make sure you don't get yourself in a situation where you aren't able to do something and there is just one of you and there's going to be a gap and you're not ready for it what would you say about that about client interactions so for me it starts uh, as a company owner that still offers services uh to clients i start this uh this dialogue during the proposal phase exactly. uh, i will always and i think i heard you say this earlier byron i will always propose the bigger team because for us the bigger team is a much easier you know it's easy, easier to manage the uh, the detail so one client that's fine guess what two vehicles at least two agents two drivers all right now we have four personnel two vehicles one client you you wouldn't believe how many people have asked me well wait a minute we only have one client why do you need all those resources and it's pretty easy i explain it to it pretty quick uh, i'll i'll give you the uh the down and dirty <laughs> uh two vehicles uh, why do I need two vehicles for one client? Well, if the client vehicle breaks down, now we have a seamless transition and we can continue our mission with that second vehicle. Uh, second reason we have a second vehicle, if there's a problem, remember I work mainly in areas that m- there may be problems, uh, that second vehicle can take care of the problem where that first vehicle with the client can get to safety. Those are the two main reasons I give for the, the two vehicles. And then the personnel, obviously, drivers stay with the vehicles, keep that you know, situation safe, we stay with the clients and keep them safe. Uh, That's kind of a a no brainer. Uh, And then I might give some examples. But in proposal, when I'm giving these options to the uh, the clients, I'm letting them know ahead of time what they're going to be sacrificing if they only want one of us. What are they going to be sacrificing? Main things. Well, if we're down in Mexico, we always want to do overnight shifts. We want to have somebody up and on that client's door uh, 24 hours a day. And so with one person, you can't do that. And so I let them know that you're sacrificing that 24 hour protection. Now, what do we do? Well, uh, we've got little camera and mic setups. We put over the uh, the client's door in the hallway that most of the time nobody ever notices. Uh, We've got door blocks, uh, door alarms. Uh, There's a lot of things that we can do to help us uh, get that advantage, even if we're working solo. Uh, Adjoining rooms are great and then blocking those doors, uh, those doors closed. So they have to eat, they have to go into our room (laughs) to get away. Um, and like I said, monitoring the hallway as much as we can, uh, things like this, we have to really be uh, put in place if we're by ourselves, because we literally have no other options, but we're going to have to get some shut eye, right. Or we're going to be, uh, you know, completely useless the next day, especially if we're driving them around. Um, so yeah, I start this at proposal phase, let them know what they're going to be sacrificing. And we, we call it, uh, in the industry, a security escort. It's not a detail anymore. It's just a security escort. So we can only do what we can during waking hours and here are the things we're going to sacrifice. And so we let's let them know ahead of time and then they understand it. And so they know, so they're not surprised when we get on the ground and they might not be getting what they got the last time they had a two or three man detail exactly exactly you want to manage those expectations from the jump uh at the proposal phase and rick nailed it man you always want to ask for more like i was saying at the beginning of this thing you know you always want to ask for more than you're actually well you want to ask for as much as you can actually get because that allows you to to um, put more layers around the client but um if you can address some of the hiccups that will happen with one agent before you guys get out there, it's going to be better for everyone. The one thing I want to make sure you guys don't do is do what a lot of the companies and and individuals that have put us, I think, as an industry in a rough position, which is being the yes men. You don't want to be a yes man. You want to make sure they know exactly what they're getting from the beginning of your relationship with them. And what will happen in the long run is, uh, 
they will see that your word has more integrity because you're you're able to tell them the things that other businesses will try not to tell them because they're afraid it'll make them look inadequate. You'll be given shooting them straight with your capability. So managing expectations begins at the beginning, at the proposal phase. And or if they're making a change to your detail, um, you really want to re reframe those responsibilities. Say you lose a guy. Um, you really want to reframe those responsibilities and let them know how that's going to impact the client, uh, the, the level of protection you're going to be able to offer moving forward as well. Boom. Working solo. Things you must get right. Uh, what would you say about planning, man? What would you say? What, what comes to mind when you think about things you've got to get right uh, when working solo, Greg? So the first thing that comes to mind is uh, your nav, uh, not getting lost. Uh, <laughs> having several layers of yes. backup to yourself because now you don't have somebody else in the car that might be uh, nav. And if you're driving and you're navving at the same time, that's not easy, especially if you're in an area you haven't been. Uh, hopefully you got on the ground and we're, we're able to do an advance and drive it before. But a common scenario is uh, a solo agent would be assigned to an artist, maybe doing a tour of South America. So you might be able to advance that first tour city, say it's Bogota, Colombia. Now you've advanced it. Your client comes into town. You work that show. Guess what? You're with that client now. Now they're going to Santiago, Chile, and you don't get to push off your front because they're by themselves. So you have to stay with them. So that's when you get into these digital advances. That's when you get into trying to run these things on street view. I don't know if any of you have actually ever run your detail on street view, uh, but you get in that Google Maps and you can actually run your entire detail uh, if it's obviously a reasonable length of time. Uh, navigation. So this is where you pull out your nav tricks. Uh, nav tricks would be, uh, I always have a navigation phone, separate phone that I nav with. I uh, will we'll put it on the mount in my car away from the uh, the client's view and i'll have a bluetooth in my ear so if i'm using the dummy lady telling me where to go uh, i can hear it in my ear only and the bluetooth is always the far side from the client never told the client you always want to be able to hear the client so you have your nav phone mounted separate from your uh, your communications phone you don't want that to be the same that's bad uh, bad protocol uh, and then you have a Bluetooth in your ear where you can hear if you need those uh, verbal directions as well so that you know where you're going. And third thing on that is offline mapping. Uh, you're going to go to some places that aren't going to have good data, good signal. So we download maps into our phones. Your satellite will work in your phone, even if your SIM card is not in anymore. Uh, the satellite system will work. And if you've already downloaded a map into your phone, maps.me is a good one I use. I've used this in Syria, Lebanon all over South America. You can download those specific maps and your phone will still work as a navigation device even if you have no data. Uh, so making sure you don't get lost. That's the first <laughs> thing driving what? those points. And it's been some close calls out there when you don't you haven't been to the city before, but so far we've done pretty good. What would you say real quick was your biggest takeaway from like fighting in the cage? You know, like I feel like these things build, make us who we are. Uh, probably for me, what it did is, is change the way I process things mentally in terms of emotions and feelings. Mm -hmm. Um, because I always got nerves, you know, walking to the ring, walking to the cage. And I realized it was just part of the process and it was a good thing. Mm -hmm. And I, I knew, okay, I get to this point, like X amount of time before the fight, I'm going to start feeling this way. And I'm going to start looking at things a certain way. And I may even question things. Am I ready? Or should I be doing this? Is this the yeah. right time? Is this guy, you know, how's, how's this work out for me? Um, and, you know, I found that I really wanted to um, not just win for me, but like, to show my team, like, this is, this is who we are. This is what we're about. And yeah. I was worried about letting them down. And mm -hmm. I found that there's this process that you go through. And if you do it enough, you figure this out, right. Which is like, I'm going to feel this way at this time. And here's how I offset it by what I eat, what I drink, who I talk to, what I talk about mm -hmm. and, and acknowledge it say, okay, this it's going to be a feeling, but it's a fleeting feeling. It's going to come and it's going to go. And I'm going to use these breathing techniques. I'm going to talk to these guys who, who've been there and done that before. And yeah. I'm going to do these things and and through you know the mental management side of it yeah. you know you're able to overcome anything and so that was probably the biggest thing i took from fighting and i'm still competing in jujitsu so even when i go and I'm, I'm competing on a national or an international event in the black belt category i have a lot of people that have expectations and right. i have to 
manage their expectation and then i have to deal with the emotions pre-fight jitters and stuff like that still to this day you know with with a bunch of stripes on my black belt it doesn't matter it's it's going to happen i acknowledge it's going to happen and then i just manage it it's part of the process what are you looking for if someone comes to you and is like hey i really want to uh join your team or be in this touring game We've shifted a lot over the years because we had more of a, like a soft kind of group of guys and that shifted over the years and shockingly they're less appropriate for a lot of the stuff that we're dealing with. So number one is Doesn't flexibility. Doesn't mean soft like, like soft. <laughs> <laughs> Special <laughs> Operations Forces guys, yeah, uh, SF, SF That's why. Marine, <laughs> MARSOC, stuff like that. But, uh, but basically normal dudes who are very motivated, who are very flexible, who um, can deal with a lot of different conditions. Um, that's everything because, you know, we have, let me back up a second. You live the life of the person you're protecting. So um, also another thing that you have to understand is that your job is to make sure nothing happens and the net result of nothing happening is nothing. So you produce nothing. And so you have to be able to articulate that in a way that they will understand your value even though you produce nothing. So guys that are able to see a situation adjust to it and then present it to people or ideas to people, those guys are invaluable for us. So people that are flexible, people that are smart and people that are capable, that's everything for us. And if they have that mental fortitude to, to just push through certain situations, another thing I would say in addition to flexibility is probably a sense of humor because the, the silliness that goes on in the circles that we're in, the things that have no relationship with reality, uh, they're constant. And so if you don't have a sense of humor, constant. you guys, I just want you guys to really hear this because I get, you know, I get new guys on the job all the time and they're like, blow, their minds are constantly blown. And I'm like, hey, bro, different, same circus, different clowns. It's not weird. I got multiple details doing the same thing. Like, this isn't weird, but this is the world we live in, you know? Yeah, there doesn't have to be a correlation to reality. Like literally whatever's going on in their head, they're gonna try to materialize in, in, in the real world. And, and yep. so you're gonna be a part of that. And in fact, you essentially, and, and I know people don't like to hear this, but you become an enabler. You're yeah. the one that's helping them get things to do stuff. And hopefully if you're a smart person, if you're a smart person, yep. you're helping them make the best choices. And this comes back to the personality profile because if I know how you think and how you operate, right. then I can present options to you in a certain way. Boom! Quick shout out to our sponsor, Staccato. My first pistol sponsor. Um, I've been sponsored by a lot of companies, right, over the years. But when it comes to pistol, that's my bread and butter. Pistol is something I believe in. You know, I'm a competitive shooter. You know, we're shooting anywhere from, you know, 800 rounds a month type of thing, right? So Staccato being what I believe is one of, if not the most complete handguns you can put in your hand. Um, it's got every component that a handgun could have, should have. Uh, they're actually extremely dependable now that they've made some changes. And these things are straight up tack drivers. If you're looking for a pistol that will do as much of the work for you as a piece of hardware can, obviously you have to have the, the, the marksmanship and all the different things, but different guns perform at different levels. And I wanna say that Staccato is one of by far, for sure, take it from a competitive shooter, we're shooting the highest volumes of rounds constantly right now, not used to have a background guy, but like right now, when you go shoot, you're gonna see certain brands. Staccato is one of, if not the highest performing firearm that is both CCW, duty ready, and also competitive ready. So I wanna give them a shout out if you guys are looking for a good handgun to build your skills on top of, go check out Staccato, much love and respect. Boom, when it comes to the technology you use to protect your home, there's nothing better than Deep Sentinel, AI-driven, human-monitored technology that will keep you and your family safe for the same price you're paying for whatever ring doorbell system you have. Check out Deep Sentinel. Um, it's such an honor to join forces with these guys. They should be in every single house in the world. Get real-time Overwatch for you and your loved one. And for 10% off, depending on when you're watching this, don't forget to use code Byron at checkout. Boom, and to support this podcast, go to executiveprotectionlifestyle.com and contribute to our Patreon account. That Patreon account is what 
helps me make this podcast possible, contributing to this brand, what we're doing here, making it so that I can bring better guests on, making it so that we can plan more events and just expand the contribution to the private security industry and also to make an America a safer place. Do whatever you can, contribute whatever you can because it makes all of these things possible. Thanks for those contributions. Oh, 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 oh